Hello again. Uh, the last two tests, uh, the ratio and the root tests, here they, there we go. So the limit as n approaches infinity from a n sub 1, n sub first, a n sub first, plus first, over a n is a limit L. If this is less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent. Absolutely convergent. If L is greater than 1 or infinity, from here the series is divergent. And if it happens to be equal to 1, no conclusion. The test is inconclusive. The ratio test, ratio test, no conclusion. So this is for the ratio. Now for the root. Exactly the same, where we are looking at the limit as n approaches infinity. From the nth root of the absolute value of n, a sub n, exactly the same results. If the limit is L and is less than 1, the same thing. A sub n is convergent. If it's greater than 1, n is divergent and exactly the same thing. Of course, absolutely convergent. Absolutely convergent. And if it's equal to 1, the same thing. The test is inconclusive or no conclusion. Good, so now let's uh, start working on uh, problems. So we start with number 3 on page 7. 78. So we have the sum n equals 1 to infinity n over 5 to the nth power. So there is no root, so obviously I'm thinking of applying the ratio. Okay, so we are looking at the limit as n approaches infinity. The absolute value, of course it's re redundant here because the terms are positive, but that's okay. So we have n plus 1 over 5 to n plus 1 divided by, and I already flipped, 5 over n. So what does this equal to? Its limit as n approaches infinity. So we have n plus 1 over simplify, and we have 5, so 5n. So this limit is 1 fifth. So we test which of these situations we have, we it's less than 1. Therefore, this series is absolutely convergent. Of course, by the ratio test. Absolutely convergent, and therefore convergent, of course. If it's absolutely convergent, we know it's also convergent. So again, let's write it here. Absolutely convergent implies convergent. Good. Uh, let's continue with number 7. Same page, 778. Let me move this out of the way. Um, and we have the in sum from k equals 1 uh, to infinity from 1 over k factorial. Same idea, we're thinking of the uh, ratio test. So we're looking at the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, it's k, sorry about that. The absolute value is redundant, all these terms are positive. So the top will be 1 over k plus 1 factorial, the denominator 1 over k factorial. So we have limit as k approaches infinity from 1 over k plus 1 factorial is 8k plus 1 times k factorial. And I flip and I get k factorial at the top. So the answer of this limit is 0, which is less than 1. Therefore, the series is absolutely convergent, of course convergent, by ratio, the ratio test. Good. 
Uh, moving on to number nine. Uh, nine is on, so on page seven, seven, eight. And we have a series of 10 to the n divided by n plus 1 and 4 to 2n plus 1. Good? Okay, yes, again, it's a ratio. We're going to think of the um, a ratio test. So we have limit as n approaches infinity. Again, the absolute value is redundant because all terms are positive, but let's put it in. n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2. And here, 2n plus 2 plus 1 is 4 to 2n plus 3. And I have to flip this, 4 to 2n plus 1 over, I'm um, sorry, also n plus 1 over 10 to the nth power. And let's see what uh, goes away, hopefully a lot. Let's try. So, um, to 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 3, so there is a 16 left here because it's 4 to the second power. Uh, there is a 10 left here. And then 10 over 16 can go outside. And this is the limit from n plus 1 over n plus, uh, plus 2. We know this limit is 1, so we get 5 divided by 8, which is less than 1. It's less than 1, so uh, the original series is absolutely convergent by the ratio test. So, then this is absolutely convergent, hence convergent, by... Um, what did I write and write? By the ratio test. You know what I meant to say. I'm just going to wipe this out so there is no confusion. So by the ratio test, and I can put that article over there. Okay, perfect. Uh, this was number 9. Let's take a look at 21. In 21, we have a series and okay, 1 to infinity from n squared plus 1 divided by 2 n squared plus 1, everything to power n. Of course, we are going to think this time to apply the uh, root test. So we are looking at the limit of the nth root of all this n squared plus 1 over 2 n squared plus 1 to the nth power. Of course, the absolute value, redundant because all terms are positive. Okay, so this will be limit as n approaches infinity from n squared plus 1 over 2 n squared plus 1. And we know this limit, L'Hopital's rule or other procedures, we get 1 half less than 1, which implies that the original series is absolutely convergent, hence convergent, of course, by the root test. By the root test. Okay. Uh, we're moving on to 25. On the same page, yes, the same page, 778. And um, here we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 plus 1 over n uh, raised to n squared. Of course, the same idea. We see a power. We're thinking of the root test. So the limit as n approaches infinity the nth root of the absolute value of 1 plus 1 over n to n squared. Redundant absolute value, all terms are positive. So this is limit as n approaches infinity 
from 1 plus 1 over n, n squared over n is copy the base, subtract the exponent, so this is power n. I don't know if you remember from Calc 1, this limit equals e. If you don't remember the procedure, um, I will give you some hints or a step here. Uh, so first you have to denote uh, this function by y. Then in step 2, you have to apply natural log to both sides. In step 3, we find the limit as n approaches infinity from the natural log y. Okay. So you apply the, net, the limit here as well. As n approaches infinity. And we will uh, rewrite it as natural log of 1 plus 1 over n over 1 over n. So it's um, 0 over 0. And we can use L'Hopital's rule. So this will be limit. Uh, the numerator differentiated will be 1 over 1 plus 1 over n times negative 1 over n, and the denominator is negative, negative 1 over n squared. Negative 1 over n squared. So then this limit is 1. So in step 4, we start with the beginning and swap the limit, swap the two operators. Natural log of the limit of y as n approaches infinity is 1, which makes this e. So finally, the limit of 1 plus 1 over n raised to power n is e when n approaches infinity. So that's how we got that. Since this is greater than 1, since it, it is greater than 1, the original series is divergent. So from here, we conclude that what was the original? n equals 1 to infinity from 1 plus 1 over n to n squared is divergent by root test. Okay, uh, let's take a look at 33. How are we with time? Good. Uh, 33 is on the same page, 778. So we have the series from 1 to infinity from negative 1 to the n, arctangent n over n squared. Good, so this is an alternating series. So let's uh, take a look at bn, which will be arctangent n over n squared, which is definitely, if you remember, this is a bounded function. Here's the graph. The arctangent, it's between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So the top, as n approaches infinity, this is pi over 2. So pi over 2 n squared. But this is the uh, p series of 1 with pi over 2 in front, n equals 1 to infinity, with p equals 2, which is greater than 1. So this is convergent. Okay, by convergent by um, being a p-series. And also remember, uh, we also have the um, limit as n approaches infinity from this, from the n equals 0. And number 2, we have that b, n plus first, is definitely decreasing, smaller than the n. Uh, this is arc tangent n over n squared and this is because the function is increasing arc tangent n plus first over n plus one squared. So either so from these two conditions uh, we will say that the original series n equals one to infinity negative one to the nth arc tangent n over n squared is convergent by the alternating series test. And that was good enough. Here you can also 
argue in the same way, convergent, by the direct comparison test. Okay, um, 30, 39, I would like to look at, and 41. Okay, so let's look at 39. And this one is still on page 778. Uh, for which of the following series is the ratio test inconclusive? Inconclusive. Ratio test inconclusive. So in part A, we have the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. So we'll apply the ratio test. The limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value again is redundant, but I, we have to write it, n plus 1 to the third over n to the third over 1, so this is indeed 1. Yes, this is a situation in which it's inconclusive. Ratio test inconclusive, yes. Uh, let's look at part b. Part b has n over 2 to the n. Again, let's apply the uh, ratio test and see what we get, if it's inconclusive or not. So limit n approaches infinity, n plus 1, 2 to n plus 1, over 2 to the n over n. Here we simply finally get a 2, and the limit will be 1 half. So this is less than 1, so the series is absolutely convergent, not the inconclusive type. So part C, n equals 1 to infinity from negative 3 to n minus 1 over the square root of n. Good. So again, limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, negative 3 to n plus 1 minus 1 is n over the square root of n plus 1. And we flip the square root of n over a negative 3 to n minus 1. So this limit will be 1, but let's see what we get. Negative 3 to n, and n minus n plus 1 will be negative 3 to an absolute value, of course, to the first power. So this will be 3. So this is greater than 1, so this is divergent, and it's not the inconclusive type. Not. We have an answer. So this is divergent. Okay, the last one here, part D. And part D, what do they want? Where is part D? Okay, I see it. n equals 1 to infinity. The square root of n over 1 plus n squared. Okay, so then we have limit n approaches infinity. The square root of n plus 1 over 1 plus n plus 1 squared, and then we flip 1 plus n squared over the square root of n. So, n squared, it will have an n squared here, so this limit will go to 1, this limit will go to 1, so this is another situation in which, yes, root, I'm sorry, ratio test is inconclusive. Okay, and the last one that we want to look at is 41, and this time on page 779. Okay, and we are saying part A, show that this series uh, converges for all x, is convergent. Okay, so we'll see. So, very important series, <coughs> you'll see later. <coughs> It's a ratio, so limit as n approaches infinity, x to n plus first over n plus first factorial times n factorial over x to the nth power. Yes, I will simplify and I get 1x there. And I will simplify here as well. So this is x, this is n plus 1 times n factorial, 
times n factorial from here, these two go away. So when n approaches infinite, this quantity approaches 0, which is less than 1, which is always convergent. Well, absolutely convergent. So for any x, for any and all x, the answer is 0. Does it not depend on x? When n approaches infinite, this quantity is 0. This limit is 0. So now deduce that. <coughs> They want us to, um, in part B, so this was part A. Oh, yeah, okay, I have it. Part B, they say, show that the limit as x approaches infinity from x to the nth over n factorial is 0. Well, we don't have to. We already did. C, part A. Thank you.